Did you know that there is roughly a credit card's worth of plastic circulating in your bloodstream right now? That's because up until 1989, it was completely legal to dump plastics directly into the ocean. And those plastics are still in our oceans. Most plastics tend to break down into smaller and smaller pieces. As you can see here in this video of a plastic straw that has been photodegraded by sunlight. Other plastics are intentionally designed to be small. You may not be able to see them, but they are in our water. I'm of course talking about microplastics. I'm KP, a marine biologist with over a decade's worth of experience working with primarily marine mammals. I'm talking about microplastics this week because a member of the KPEEP community shared an article with me that was frankly surprising. If you're interested in joining the KPEEPs, you can of course subscribe to the channel and we also have memberships available. This study was led by Stanford University scientists who found that our ocean's most massive animals also consume massive amounts of microplastics. The study focused on baleen whales, specifically blue, fin, and humpback whales. It found that humpback whales consume over 200,000 pieces of plastic daily, and blue whales eat up to 10 million pieces of microplastic every single day. That's a 60-inch flat screen TV's worth of plastic every single day. I know from the comment section on previous videos, such as our snow crab video, that the idea that scientists can calculate these large numbers without using their fingers or counting literally each and every individual item can be a little bit hard to understand. Simply put, these scientists use a wide range of technologies including sensor-laden devices known as biologging tags, which use suction cups to affix to the whales. These tags, which I talk about in a video right up here, collect very accurate physiological data about the whales. So we know for a fact that these whales are consuming enormous amounts of plastic, but how and why? And furthermore, how are these plastics ending up in humans, like you and me? There are many types of microplastics from bottles, food packaging, and plastic bags that have broken into smaller pieces, like the straw we talked about in the beginning of the video, but also manufactured polyethylene plastics, roughly the size of a grain of sand, known as microbeads or microfibers. Microbeads are typically added to health and beauty products, like exfoliating skin products or even toothpaste. Microfibers are tiny strands of plastic, like polyester and nylon, that are woven into fabric used to make clothing. These synthetic fabrics are cheap, comfortable, and very popular. Every time these synthetic clothes are washed, thousands of microfibers are shed by a single synthetic garment, according to a study by the clothing brand Patagonia. These microfibers then travel to local wastewater treatment plants but they're so tiny that nearly half of these synthetic fibers slip through the treatment centers into our rivers, lakes, and then into the ocean. Once they are in the water system, these tiny microplastics are consumed by the world's tiniest creatures. Zooplankton, like krill, who eat these microplastics and are then eaten by larger animals like fish, and then the microplastics biomagnify up the food chain, where they eventually reach us. Biological magnification is the process whereby substances work their way up the food chain in progressively greater concentrations. When predatory animals feed, they not only consume the prey, but also all of the toxic chemicals or items within said prey. What if a small fish, like an anchovy or a herring, consumed 10 zooplankton during a single feed? If a zooplankton ate, per se, one microplastic, and of course the actual number is probably much higher, then that anchovy now has 10 pieces of plastic in their system. What if bigger fish, like salmon and tuna, then consume 10 anchovies? The salmon now have 100 pieces of plastic in their system. This process magnifies all the way up the food chain to animals like eagles, orcas, 
and humans, where concentrations of these microplastics can reach dangerous levels. A study published in March of this year discovered a credit card worth of microplastics in 80% of human blood samples. If these plastics are in our blood, that means they are circulating through our entire body, potentially even in our brains. Making things even worse, corroborating studies also found large levels of microplastics in human placentas as well as breast milk. The scary thing is we don't actually know what effect this has on us. We do, however, have an idea of what this means for animals like orcas, who, like us, are at the top of the food chain. It is a well-documented fact that the survival rate of orca calves is extremely low. Most wild killer whales die before they are even weaned. And while there are several reasons for this, one of the more documented reasons is that the mothers are passing down toxins, such as microplastics, through their milk. I've talked a bit about the struggles facing the southern resident killer whales, and you can find that video right up here. But what does that mean for the blue, fin, or humpback whales? Well, the same as with humans right now, we're not really sure. According to the researcher who led the study, we imagine that it will have some sort of impact, but we don't know the exact health effects. This is the first step to figuring that out. The good news is, is that the U.S. banned microbeads in 2015, and several other countries have followed suit. We're also getting a lot better at using less plastics in our everyday lives, from paper straws to reusable grocery bags. While these seem like small things, just like microplastics, they can add up to make a big difference. We can also make a big difference by voting in representatives that are gonna hold larger corporations responsible. As always, there are links to those cited sources down in the descriptions below, where you can also find information about how you can help support the channel. And I'll catch you next time. Cheers. As you can see here in this video, the thing that I'm holding right now, the thing in my hand, the pen is blue kind of ad-libbing there. I'm not sure that it turned out well. <laughs> That's a 60-inch flat screen TV worth of plastic. Uh, that's daily. I know from the comment section, section, section? That are woven into fabric, fabric, fabric. That's the, that's how the French say it. <laughs>